Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Right, for this video, I'm going to look at every single Premier League club and find one former player associated with your club that is almost responsible for destroying somebody's career. Some of these are bad tackles, some of these are accidental, but I'm going to find one player who used to play for your club that committed an atrocious tackle that really impacted the other player. Oh, by the way, these aren't necessarily tackles they made for your club, just someone who you've once employed. Arsenal and Richard Wright. Listen, Richard Wright's career was literally with nothing but injuries, so it seems a bit odd suddenly to have him down as the perpetrator. But yeah, back in November 2000, the former Arsenal goalie, then at Ipswich, ended the career of Ronaldo's favourite strike partner. Aston Villa striker Lucas Nilis, a man who Rufin Roy once called one of the best footballers he's ever played with, collided with Wright, leaving him with a compound fracture of his right chin, and he never really recovered. Poor guy. Aston Villa, Gary Cahill. For Villa, let's drag up old boy Gary Cahill, who began his career at Villa Park, and sadly ended the career of Ryan Mason, an accidental collision, and I'm pretty sure he's devastated about it, but yeah, in February 2018, the pair clash heads and the former Spurs midfielder was forced to hang up the boots at 24. Bournemouth, Harry Archer. Okay, this didn't end anyone's career, but it was horrible all the same. In May 2017, Archer collides with Stokes Joe Allen, curtling into him like a runaway train. Thankfully, it didn't end in a serious injury, but good lord, it was a bad tackle. Brighton, Ashley Barnes. Oh, well, Josie Mourinho will remember this one very well. Some say Nemanja Matic never really recovered from this tackle. Some also call this the turning point of Mourinho's second Chelsea spell. February 2015, with Chelsea flying high towards the title, Barnes, former Brighton centre forward, now with Burnley, catches Matic with a high tackle, forcing Mourinho to brand him a criminal on live national television. Some say it's because of this that Matic is now too scared to fully commit to tackles, and for the last five years has just been a shadow of what he once was. Burnley Andy Todd. Alright, good old Andy Todd. What a black Bernie elbow robbing the Percy Square in the face during an FA Cup semi-final. I mean, I guess that's pretty bad. Chelsea, Sean Wright Phillips. When you think of tough tackling, hard hitting players who could potentially end a teammate's career, you don't think of five foot midget Sean Wright Phillips. He looks like he weighs less than a bag of sand. What's he ever gonna do with his size seven feet? He's a grown man and yet still has to ask for assistance when trying to reach the top shelf in Asda. And yet, he's responsible for destroying the legacy of the next Alan Shearer. A 24 year old Dean Ashton was called up for a post World Cup friendly against Greece in the summer of 2006. This was supposed to be his big break. And it was, just not the one he wanted. It was a training ground challenge that resulted in a broken ankle, never truly recovered, and was forced to retire age 29. Crystal Palace, Stephen Hunt. It's quite sad though, Stephen Hunt's footballing legacy. The biggest impression he made in his career is the fact that he caused one of the world's top goalies to spend the rest of his career in a scrum cap. Because three Hunt is only 38 and grey as a mule, he probably wouldn't be averse to spending his life in a hat. But anyway, back in October 2006, he accidentally rammed his knee into Petr Cech's head during Chelsea's trip to Reading. It was a serious depressed skull fracture and nearly cost the goalie his life. Thankfully, he bounced back and went on to have a great career but Christ above Hunt. I would imagine the week Czech spent in hospital this guy didn't sleep a wink and probably a Chelsea fans chucking the ham sandwiches at him in the street. Although considering all the upper body strength of a malnourished orphan he could probably have done with a free grub. Everton Thomas Meyer. Liverpool legend Robbie Fowler claims he could have been the best in the world but for any injury. This was almost the moment Robbie Fowler's career swung the other way. Back in 1999 the then Everton goalie Thomas Meyer crashed into the Anfield God. At just 22 years of age he suffered an anterior cruciate ligament injury which ruled him out for the rest of the season in the 98 World Cup. At the time Fowler was one of the most feared centre forwards in world football. Within two years, he was chucked out the door to Leeds, before going on to spend the rest of his career coated in mediocrity and burgers. He could have become England's answer to Ronaldo. Instead, he spent his peak stuffing his face with donuts at Man City. Leicester, Johnny Evans. Bold the fans will remember this one. Stuart Holden, what could have been? An exciting USA international midfielder strutting his stuff with the Reebok ten years ago, before being crunched like a stale brick of Weetabix. This guy probably has PTSD flashbacks of Old Trafford when a young Johnny Evans sunk his studs into his left kneecap. It left a gash which required 26 stitches, it fractured his knee joint, ruled him out of action for six months, he never truly recovered and was forced to retire age 27. I bet Evans feels pretty bad about that now. Liverpool John Arnarisa. 13 years later, Alan Smith still has a pain in his left ankle. This is what happens when you get in the way of John Arnarisa free kick. Christ above, back during an epic up tie at Anfield, Man United's Alan Smith, being groomed as a midfield successor for Roy Keane, ended up a crumpled, bloodied mess. He was out of action for over a year, missed a cup final, but was pretty much finished at the top level. Chucked back into the world of midfield relegation battles with Newcastle before lower league football with MK Dons and Notts County. Quite sad for a guy who won at least was one of the most promising set of forwards in the country. Man City Nigel De Jong. I know I've been at pains to stress that I don't blame the majority of these players for accidental collisions, but with Nigel De Jong, I do not absolve you of any blame. Just months earlier, this guy had planted his boot into the chest of Xabi Alonso during a World Cup final. How had nobody told him to mind his feet? So in October 2010, he crushes Newcastle's Helen Ben Arfa like a twig. Ben Arfa is an incredible footballer, a joy to watch, and my favourite player of all time. Broken tibia, a broken fibula in his left leg, ruled out for the entire season, depriving the world of footballing genius like this. It's almost like spitting a ball of phlegm onto the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It's a disgrace! Manuel Ida Roy Keane. Roy Keane has had 20 years to apologise for this tackle, still hasn't done it. Look, this is a man who clearly holds grudges, having never forgotten 
Alfin Challenge screaming in his face while stricken with a cruciate ligament injury in 1997, bring out the Manchester Derby in 2001. If Keane had aimed that tackle six inches higher, Erling Haaland wouldn't be banging them in for a rush of Dortmund, he'd cease to exist. The only way this tackle would be classed as accidental is if Keane was f***ing blind. Anyway, Haaland never completed the full 90 minutes ever again. Newcastle, Kevin Nolan. Okay, you might say, oh, Kevin Nolan didn't end Victor in HB's career. Oh yeah, uh, after this sickening crunch challenge, and HB1 had scored 22 goals in the next 150 games. Are we just supposed to believe he was terrible all along? Nolan's tackle on HB back in March 2009 was bad. Look at the state of that tackle, two-footed right out of the shin. That would probably hurt more than getting sat on by Susan Boyle. How this guy's leg wasn't broken, how he wasn't confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, it's nothing short of a miracle. It was so bad, Newcastle were forced to pay a six-figure sum of compensation with HB, and we know Mike Ashley doesn't like opening his wallet for anything that isn't coated in grease. Now it's Martin Taylor. Okay, finally we get to fit Martin Taylor in here. A former Norwich skinhead defender, on loan from Birmingham. He definitely looks like a man who could have been a bone crouching bouncer in a previous life. He's only famous for one thing, destroying the career of Thierry Henry's replacement. Eduardo, a Croatian hotshot who just fired 12 goals home during his opening six months in North London as Arsenal sat top of the league. Yeah, it was crushed like a tin of big beans. I'm sure this was accidental, I hope this was accidental, but good lord, it was a tackle so bad, Taylor was inundated with death threats, with Wenger calling for him to be banned for life, Eduardo suffered a broken leg and a dislocated ankle, was out of action for an entire year before being shuffled off to Shakhtar Donetsk having never truly recovered. Sheffield United, Jay McEvely. Yeah, let's shuffle in former Sheffield United left back, Jay McEvely, a man who had about 20 different clubs. This guy is responsible for nearly destroying Chibo Cisse's career. Oh, good lord. Southampton, Ryan Bertrand. Again, thankfully this didn't injure anybody, but Ryan Bertrand was sent off this season for a mindless tackle on Ayotte Perez. The Spaniard got up, dusted himself down, bagged the hat-trick and won 9-0. Good job, Ryan. Tottenham, Paul Robinson. How guilty must Paul Robinson have felt? The then Spurs in England number one almost chucked his World Cup hopes down a bin. On New Year's Day, the first day of 2006, a year where England fans hoped would be the new 1966, the England goalie instead broke the foot of England's number nine. It's fair to say when Owen finally returned, his yard of pace and fearlessness in front of goal were both gone. Watford, Miguel Britos. Yeah, go back to the start of the 17-18 season. Miguel Britos drags out this kamikaze tackle on Brighton's Anthony Knockhart. A red card, sure, but Christ, he's lucky he didn't break his leg. West Ham, Jermaine Defoe. You just knew these two would finally come up against each other in an old firm derby. Craig Gordon spent about a decade hating Jermaine Defoe. Sure, the England striker stood on his arm, breaking it during a game between Sullivan and Spurs back in 2009. This resulted in an initial three-month layoff, further surgeries, more injuries, and yeah, once a British record goalkeeper, it's fair to say he wound up an injury-riddled mess in the Sullivan treatment room. It must annoy him that even those fans, the ones who had his back, ended up loving Defoe more than him. Wolves, Dennis Irwin. Yeah, you know that famous David Boost injury for Coventry back in the 90s? This is arguably the most gruesome some injury in the history of football. Anyway, this happened in April 1996 after he collided with then Man United left back Dennis Irwin and good lord, he never played again. Anyway, that's the end of the last one. What do you think? If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and as always, I'll talk to you in a while.